What do you mean you want to be a rock star? <laughs> well, they seem to have such fun. I mean, you know, they make a lot of money and they seem to have a lot of fun. I think it's super. <laughs> I don't know, but are we starting? I guess, you know, you want to be a rock star too? Well, no. Okay, we're on. Okay, well, my name is Corey Hay. And Tonight, Anton Parrott and I are taking you to 7th Avenue, up high, high in the sky, where Scott Perry works all that fashion magic. We're going to be here with Norma Jean and Billy, and we're going to see the clothes and talk to Scott and find out what's happening. But, but I, why would you want to be a rock star when you're such a great fashion genius in your own right? Well, isn't it true that usually, whatever you are, it seems that you always aspire to be something else after you sort of attain that? and head-to-foot uh, designing. Is this the answer to some sort of dream? Well, you? sure. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to do a collection any other way. I mean, the clothes, the clothes themselves are just not enough. I mean, there has to be something else. Do you eventually see yourself branching out into furniture and pillows and cookware and luggage? And <laughs> I guess well, that's kind there's no of, end. I think, I think what I would really like would, would, would be a... Uh, a perfume or a cosmetic line, not particularly uh, to do sh sheets and towels and uh, that kind of thing. I think I would like to keep it all associated with with fashion. You know, with, with fashion itself, rather than uh, the things that that uh, pertain to fashion in, in in another kind of way. When you put together your things that pertain to the whole lifestyle, I say. when you put together your collection, are you envisioning a certain kind of woman that looks a certain way and. It, if so, could you sort of tell us what she looks like? What's the Scott Berry woman look like? Well, Billy and Norma Jean, of course. She, she, my, my woman is really into clothes. She's really into herself and what she looks like. Because I think I designed the kind of dresses that are very special kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, dresses that are not, uh, but may not appeal to the ordinary woman. They consider them way out. And I've just discovered that through... Uh, traveling around the country that these these ladies really think that my things are so far out and uh, I mean I don't think they've really had that much exposure to uh, other designers say Isandra Rhodes or Bill Gibb in London you know I mean really these these people I think do things that are much more much farther out than the things that I do Tell me, you know, have you been enjoying going around the country, visiting the different stores where your clothes have, are being sold, and talking to the, the people out there in California, and to go to Omaha and all these crazy places too? Sure, and Denver too. Denver too. <laughs> being in New York, be, you know, being really the center of the world, fashion-wise, art-wise, theater-wise, really everything-wise, do you think that we're sort of insulated against the whole world, really, and what we think is happening is we're just... Are we enclosed in some small little world called New York City? I really don't think so. I think that the rest of the country sort of aspire to be what New York is, or what Paris is, or what any major city is. The outlying areas always somehow seem to depend on that for their kind of uh, inspiration for whatever it is, what they consider to be real fashion. So they depend, well, there is no other fashion capital in this country outside of New York. I mean, New York is it. Uh, Norma and uh, Billy wearing these from your newest collection. This is from the from the, the most recent collection. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the collection while they're going to be well, photographing it contains, those. It contains a lot of pajamas and soft looks for the summer, spring and summer. I mean, one things that uh, a lady could wear at home or she could wear out even. Tell me, is this? A lot of, we're hearing a lot about feminine clothes, fluid clothes, liquid, that's, body clean clothes. That's what I believe in. I believe in uh, clothes that even if they're not made in uh, jersey fabrics, but still have a certain softness to them. Even if it's a, a wool flannel, it can be worked into, or gabardine, it can be worked into something that's, that's quite, quite soft. How does it feel, Norma Jean, to be in uh, a Scott Berry outfit? Well, it's sort of soft, casual, easy elegance, and it feels good and has a touch of nostalgia, which is just my style. Tell me, what do you wear under this? Nothing. <laughs> well, a pair of stockings, maybe, but that's it. How can you wear anything under it? <laughs> do you find the clothes hard to take care of? I mean, are these wash and wear or dry clean, or what kind of care do they have when you're... This would take dry, dry cleaning. Right, okay. So tell me about what Billy's wearing over here. Billy's wearing a pajama with its own bra and a chiffon cape.
chunks are very, very soft, very feminine. And this, this, where doesn't this, this goes out in the evening. I mean, she's got to be noticed when she walks into a room. She will absolutely be a standout in any room. Uh, there's no, she can stand out of no matter what, what <laughs> right? Tell me, when the ladies go to buy these things in the store, are they all put together just like that? The, the beige cape with the blue and the flower? Well, and the coloration depends on, on the lady, you know, if, if it's a redhead, they do something special, or green, or uh, maybe even an orange tone. I know a lot of these girls are your friends, as well as, you know, working the clothes for you, huh? Friends. Oh, they're all friends of mine. So they understand my clothes. They understand what my clothes are about and how they work. Okay, Billy, so what's it like wearing that chiffon cape and that great pajama outfit, huh? Well, I really feel like a cloud in it. It's very soft and it makes me feel very sexy. You are very sexy. <laughs> Tell me, you know, I've been reading a lot about you, Billy, since you came to New York last year and have really become really the model of the year. So what did you think of that article People Magazine did all about you? It was really fabulous, and I really appreciate um, the people thinking enough of me to write an article on me. Tell me she is just supermodel, no two ways about it. She's just supermodel. I know Billy, you know, gets to wear all the clothes, and tell us what's Scott Berry like? What's he really like? You really want to know what Scotty's really like? He's a barrel of laughs and loads of fun, and I think that's why his clothes are so great to wear, because he puts his personality into his clothes. Fabulous ideas, and he's just a great person. Okay, I know that she's really fantastic, huh? Inspiration for this new collection. Well, I deal in nostalgia somewhat, but updating nostalgia. I think, I think that these, these are clothes that are done in fabrics that were used in the, in the 20s and 30s. Crepe de chines and uh, uh, matte jerseys and uh, chiffons. They're all fabrics that are difficult to work with. And uh, I really have a load of nerves <laughs> to choose such fabrics to work with. But I've been doing it for a long time now. And uh, my factory understands how, how the fabrics work. Now, after, after experimenting with them for such a Flowers that I noticed you're putting the flowers under the hat instead of on the hat. What's the reason for that? Well, I think it's newer. I mean, the flowers have been put on hats since I don't I don't know. I can't tell you how many years. But I think it's kind of new. It's sort of tough for flowers under the brim. Now, are these really old fabrics, or are these copied from old fabrics? Or tell us a little bit about you know. God, the way they fit, Scott. You really know how to show a woman's figure. <laughs> They are not old fabrics, they are new fabrics. This is a fabric that I search endlessly for because uh, the other fabrics just don't do the same thing. What do you mean they don't do the same well, thing? Well, I mean, they're making crepe machines now with nylon and that kind of thing and polyesters. But this is, this is the original fabric that was used. Of course, there is a silk crepe machine. This is a rayon crepe machine, which, is, was, which was more for, for price. Because the silks are today, of course, are very costly. What's a dress like this cost a lady in a store? About 160. 160, 180, somewhere around there. Are these machine made or handmade or fin hand finished or? Ooh, they're uh, they're made in my in my factory, of course. I, I think that. Uh, hand. <laughs> oh, how can I talk being this close? <laughs> I think that uh, handmade garments are for another period, another, another era. But I see a lot of sewing machines and things back there. You've got a really a whole thing happening back there. What do they do back there? Well, because of the nature of my dresses, because they're uh, difficult to make, we don't like to form them out to contractors. We like to, I like to watch everything myself, so that's the reason for, for having my own factory, so that I can watch everything and, uh, and to make sure that we care about the fit. We care about... Uh, it fits. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a lovely fit. <laughs> so, do you feel that, you know, you get your, a lot of your movement from the clothes? Is it easier to walk and feel sexy? And, oh, uh, yes, if they fit and cling like this, it's very easy. <laughs>
tell me, Scott, this is a little belt down here in the same thing. It's a, it's a covered belt in the same fabric. A very small belt because I don't think that this dress needs a, a, a big, wide belt. I think it's better. This, again, a nostalgic touch, the very small belt. Tell me a little bit about, you know, you know these, lo these are the darts and this little... How do you get that effect when, you know... How does it happen, a dress like this? And you, I notice there's a little extra... F yeah. yeah, there's something happening there. I don't know what it is, but maybe you could tell us what it is. It's just all in the cut. It's all in the kind of uh, silhouette or the kind of shape that, that you want. So you have to, to fit it accordingly to, for the kind of fit that one wants. Yeah. I think that this is, is, and it is a kind of a late 20s, 30s kind of fit. It has a cowl neckline, which is just a soft touch. and It's very nice. It's how long does it take you, you know, from the idea in your head to the dress right here? About how long does it take to pull that off? Well, it depends. Sometimes the ideas roll around a long time before you can really sort of decide how you want it to work out, if you want to put it in uh, what fabric and what colors and so on. Hey, Scott, what are you doing right here now? <coughs> I'm belting her. <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> How do you feel about being belted, Billy? As long as it's on my waist and not in my mouth. <laughs> this is, now this is kind of something, what, what exactly is this? This doesn't look like a belt. It looks more like a ribbon. Well, it's just a little cord, you know. I believe in, in small belts, tiny belts. Sometimes we don't really belt them. We, just, we sort of um, either sash the waist or uh, is this something that... Can you tell us anything about this dress? Is this, is this a day dress, an evening dress, an afternoon dress, or tea, what do we a tea dress? <laughs> something for the palm court at the plaza? Exactly. Around 4 o'clock? Exactly. Each, each collection contains um, kind of fantasy things that uh Is Billy and Norma Jean, are these the ideal women that you're designing for? Is this what you want them to look like as far as, you know, this weight, this height, this... Uh... Well, uh, realistically, ideally, everyone like, like to design for, uh, for uh, you know, uh, the ideal figure. But it, uh, it's not always, I mean, we're How are clothes itself. adaptable to other people who have, you know, breasts and hips? Oh, well, we simply change the fabrics. And, of course, with each size, the dress is larger, so it fits a number of people. That's what I meant about clothes appealing to a certain, a certain woman, not, not every woman, perhaps. Oh, there's Norma Jean. Norma Jean, what do you feel like? You, what are you wearing now? Oh, a little green Charleston dress. Mm. <laughs> I know that Norma's got a new play. Yes. Yeah, it's it's called Les Femmes Noir, and it's at the Public Theater. Joe Papp's producing, Novella Nelson directed, and we're very pleased with it. We have a lot, nice long run coming up. What are you doing in the play? Oh, I play a very uh, neurotic woman who's going to a psychiatrist, and then I play a woman who had an unfortunate interracial marriage oh, named Laverne. Laverne? <laughs> yes. And the other one is Charlotte. All the ladies are very tragic. And I, I'm also an understudy, and I've been on several times as Carl, a very confused businesswoman. So we all have our problems in that play. Charlotte, when you're not on. Well, I'm thinking about taking acting classes. I'm not sure yet. I mean, going from nursing into modeling is quite a big change. Nursing? Yes. Went to nursing school. I wanted to be a registered nurse. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know that. Yes, and then I was going to go on and be an anesthetist and work in the hospital with my mother. My mother's a surgical technician, and she always wanted me to work with her. And I worked part time as um, a model, and then modeling kind of overtook the nursing part of it. And so here I am. We should learn to move like that. Certainly, they don't teach you that in uh, RN school. <laughs> That's a natural, that's a natural attribute. Oh, I had that so feeling. Every holiday, the kids got a quarter if they come and dance for the adults. <laughs> what, what, where were you doing this dancing? Oh, in the living room at home. Ooh, that's She's great. So <laughs> for a quarter? <laughs> Listen, I'm going to go out to the bank anymore. and... Uh, I think our rate is now uh, about $100 an hour. 
God, is that what the girls are getting now? hundred dollars an hour when you're a big star like Philly? Girls are. I th well, Apollonia, and um, but I'm getting seven five an hour. Ooh, it's worse than my psychiatrist. <laughs> my God. <laughs> Which agency are you with now? I'm with Eileen Ford for print and Ellen Hart for shows. Oh, that's great. My God, you're going to be a millionaire. Well, I really don't want to be a millionaire. I just want to have enough money to do the things that I want to do, and that's all. And then, what do, what do you need with... Actually, these millions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I really think it's fabulous, so that... I knew Billy, um, I guess, about four or five years ago when she first came to New York, and I booked her immediately for a show of mine. I was at that time just sort of uh, getting a foothold in, in this business. And uh, I knew then that she would she would become really a successful model. I didn't know how successful, but um, it was just, you know, at that time that I first seen her work and she did one of my early shows, really one of the first shows I'd done. And, uh, and um, um, she came back four years later, three years later, whatever, and uh, it was, I mean, the sky was, just, was the limit. I mean, she's just going great guns now. It's fantastic, and you know we're all very happy for. Her. I think that. What about Norma Jean? Tell us a little bit about her. She was also. She's she's been in almost every show I've, I've ever done, and she, aside from being a great friend, she's a sensational model. Actually, uh, I think one of the best models, and responsible for, in many ways, for the black model being. Uh, important in fashion today. Tell me, you know, when you first came to 7th Avenue, was there a lot of hype about you being black, or did you have any trouble about that? I never noticed. Honestly and truly, I never, I never really noticed. People would give you reasons why things were not done, but you could never really pinpoint and say that that was the reason why. And I never took the time to, to, give, it, to give it that much of a thought, you know. Uh, there were occasions that it was made pretty obvious that uh, you know, that uh, certain things were not allowed. And uh, even my family told me at one point that, oh, you want to be a designer? You know, designers, that's a white boy's game. You're not going to get anywhere being a designer. But uh, a few of us stuck it out. And I think now the market has opened up and uh, there are several black designers on 7th Avenue. And uh, whether they are dame designers or uh, ones that are just working for large companies and get no credit for it. So, but I think that there's a few of us that are responsible for this. Do you exclusively use black models for all your clothes? And no. No, usually it's uh, half, about half and half. I make it a point not to book just, uh, just black models. I book the people that I like, the models that, that do the best for the clothes. After all, I'm not selling just just to a black market. I'm selling to uh, the country, the world. Would you say that being black is giving you some sort of special inspiration for the clothes you design? Uh, yes, I, I think so. To pinpoint it exactly what, what these things are, people will immediately say a sense of color because I'm black, a, a kind of coloration that, uh, that may be unique. And that may be true, but I mean, it's just not something that's on the surface that I can I can say is the absolute reason for my, for my using these particular colors because I'm black. I, just, I think it has to do something with uh, taste. Historically speaking, I mean, I think, is this the first time that black designers have come to the forefront? Sure, absolutely. There were, there were none before. There were a few designers that worked for uh, houses on 7th Avenue that never got any credit. They were mainly technicians that worked in uh, the workrooms. God, look how beautifully the clothes work. It's, you know, this is really, they look so fantastic in the way they move and it's, <laughs> that's great. Well, Norma Jean, you were very sexy. Okay, okay. I want to hear all about your cookbook. You cook, she cooks, she models. The other one's a nurse, an actress. I mean, <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Well, I've got this on. If we could do a quick pan and talk about the book, then I'll get a funky number. A funky number, and then we'll talk about the book. What do you mean? Isn't this funky enough? Well, this is funky, of course, but this is a little serious. I mean, this is sort of sophisticated and kind of high fashion. Oh, yes. 
Where would you wear a dress like this? To a funeral. <laughs> Did you hear what she just said? I did hear that. <laughs> it's not even black. on the brain because I'm doing a cookbook that deals with foods you take to a funeral. With what? Foods you take to a funeral. Listening to this conversation. Yeah, like, because in the South, the best cooking is done for funerals to give you a wonderful send-off to the other world. You know, funerals are very serious. And my grandfather was the first black mortician in North okay. Carolina. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh my God. I hope he wasn't a necrophiliac in between too, huh? <laughs> has Norma Jean ever cooked for you, uh, Scott? Yes, she has cooked for huh? me. Yes, she has. She's she, what's she cook? cook? I'm, I'm dying to see this cookbook. Well, it was it's something simple, simple and southern. The southern, huh? Yes. From the south? How do you think that uh, food relates to clothes? Do you know, do you dress, you know, a lot of dresses that might get sometimes get in the way of eating, and do you think of things like that? Of course, you have to think of if you're doing a kind of sleeve that's going to, that's going to get in the way of, uh, it's going to dip into the soup or something. I think that it, it, one has to watch that, you know. God, so. look at it, move that little, uh, whatever, <laughs> that's fantastic. Do, do you give a lot of attention to the fluid movement, movement of the clothes and how the girls are wearing it? Absolutely. I mean, there are certain certain people that you think of as you're designing a particular garment, you know. For instance, if I'm using a red-haired girl, or uh, if I'm using a, a girl that's this Norma's color or Billy's color, you think of what dresses you're going to put them in, you know, and, and how they move, and what the dress is going to do as they move. God, the dresses are <laughs> great when they move. Go ahead, Scott. Go ahead now. Go up there and dance, huh? There it is, okay? Scott in his clothes. <laughs> okay, I'll dance with Billy. Okay, Billy, come on. Huh? So tell me, darling, is it nice? Do you like dancing in these clothes? Oh, yes. See how they just move? Make you want to move even more. The dress really shows uh, how you move, too, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the other night I said, you know, Billy, you ought to be in films, huh? Thought about that? Yes. I've been thinking about it, well, for the last month. I've really been thinking Where do you about think it. you're going to acting school? Well, I don't know yet. I've been asking friends. I've talked to Norma Jean about it and um, other friends. <laughs> okay, let's go. Norma Jean, you don't look like you're at a funeral with me. Oh, we have happy funerals. <laughs> Does that look like a funeral dress? Doesn't look I don't know. Just to me. Hey Scott, when are you going to start designing some men's clothes, huh? Very, very soon now. I'm just negotiating a deal for men's clothes, and it should be coming up sometime in the fall. It's because this um, doesn't look like high fashion, which you get on today, huh? <laughs> this is a Saturday afternoon? Anything is high fashion. It all, it all depends who wears it and how it's worn. What do you think about New York in terms of its nightlife? Do you think of the clothes in terms of nightlife in New York? Oh, sure. I mean, that's probably one of the first concerns. You know, what people wear to, to things in New York, you know? And they need a special... It has to be something that's... That's much different from uh, well, something that inspires the rest of the country to wear that particular thing. You want to get certain people into it. So you think about the people in New York and what they do with their lives or in their lives. What do you do with your life in New York? Well, I go out a lot. I go dancing. I go to plays. I go to uh, restaurants. I go to parties. Do you travel a lot too, Scott, going to Europe? Too, yes. I travel to Europe maybe three or four times a year at least. What do you do over there? Looking for inspiration, buying fabric? Well, or? not particularly inspiration, but I think that you can be inspired by well, whatever you see, whatever's around you, you know? Even music is inspirational. Tell me, how do you go about choosing what kind of music you're going to have playing at the shows? It depends on the mood of the collection. You know, if, if it's uh, a kind of... Uh, I mean, we've danced our way through several seasons now. I think it's now is it's a more serious time, and I think that we 
will not, my next collection will not be a rock, a rock concert. <laughs> What's going to be next collection? It's going to be a very kind of serious uh, show fashion. I can't tell well, I just can't. yet. It won't be anything that that uh, I want to make it something that that hasn't been heard a lot before. Uh, or a new combination music, of new clothes. Things. Exactly. You know, a, a new feeling at least. What's going to be happening next season? Have you been thinking ahead a little bit? And you well, know, no, what's going to be happening? That's a secret that I should not divulge just, just no. yet. <laughs> smart. Smart. Been there anything you want to recommend to those New Yorkers, you know, some new play, some new movie? Have you seen The Gatsby yet? Yes, I did see The Gatsby. What did you think about Great it? Great Gatsby. And I liked it for several reasons. Even though the critics said that it was an awful movie, I thought there were certain things that redeemed the movie, you know? What did you think about the clothes? I thought the clothes were beautiful. I think Theoni Aldridge is one of the best designers in the world today. For what she does, I mean, for, for uh, movies and, and for, for theater. I think she's excellent. Absolutely marvelous. Have you seen uh, Let My People Come or any of those crazy new plays? Yes, I have. Huh? What did you I think of that? It. It's fun. It's a fun play. Uh, the music, I was most impressed with the music more than the, uh, the actual nude bodies. I think the, the, music, the, the music and lyrics were very clever. When you walk down the street and you see one of your dresses, do you turn around and see how it looks? Or? Of course. I always look to see who's wearing it and how it's being worn and, uh, and decide that the shoes are wrong or the hat's wrong. Or she do you ever tell them or walk up and say, hey? No, I never tell them. You just keep going? I keep going because people get offended, especially in New York. Right. Who is this guy telling me what I should wear and how I should wear I paid for the dress. <laughs> <laughs> what did it see? Oh my God. Everything's really fitting really tight and close and, uh, huh? Well, that's kind of a Scott Berry statement. That's kind of what Scott Berry is known for. Clinging jersey dresses or very fluid dresses. Uh, Lots of skin coming through. Lots of skin, or if, if it's not a lot of skin coming through, it's a lot of uh, a lot of fit to the dress. A very sensuous kind of body clothing. Now I can, I, you know, I lose track of what I'm saying when I look in at uh, what they're doing. Anton gets all the fun. He gets to uh, <laughs> go right in the dressing room and. Uh, you never know what he's going to have them doing next, you know. I see some things I have to adjust. Okay, well, let's go in and do that. That's okay. Think they're coming out. They're going to come out? Yes. Okay. Anton would keep them all in there to himself, you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> give I him a chance. So. I see. He's very busy. Yeah. What do you think about cable television? You watch cable television, Scott? Yes, I do. You watch I, our I show? I love it. Yes, huh? indeed. Maybe a little bit. I don't know. Let's see. Here they come. Scott Berry dresses, flowers, shoes, the whole total Scott Berry look. I hope you're all appreciating this uh, this color. Huh? Okay. Scott's moving in to do a little adjusting now. What do you think, Anton? A couple beautiful girls? Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Sexy? Yes. Ooh, we ought to make some movies with them, huh? Oh, oh, oh. I don't know if we could afford them, but it'd be nice to make some little uh, couple couple soap operas with these two, huh? Look, it's fantastic, huh? It's really great. I think modeling is uh, a great place for a lot of the girls to, you know, kick off from I think acting. So. And well, it's, it's something that works since the Susie Parkers of this world and uh, and several other models that have become big stars through modeling. Sybil Shepherd. It's another one. I think he's going to be really a Ali McGraw. Ali McGraw. You know, Verushka. You know, I really think that, you know, I read Penthouse and I read Playboy and I read Wee, but I think that the sexiest girls in the world are fashion girls. I think so, too. The models really know how to move. And well, they have the length of body and uh, the kind of, uh, the kind of uh, sense of movement more than, than perhaps the, the aver your average starlet. 
What you think of that Sam Jones cover on Wii? That was pretty crazy. Fabulous. Huh? Ooh, pretty. You know, at first I wasn't quite sure that was Sam Jones. Really? I wasn't. I wasn't sure. But I think it's fantastic. You know, speaking of models turned actors, she's another one. It's unbelievable. They're all. And I think what's that? Uh, Jean Shrimpton. Jean Shrimpton. You know, they really are. Where is she today? I don't know. I'd like to know. I'd like to know too. I think she's she's a very beautiful girl, and I do see her occasionally in London Vogue or something like that. But uh, nothing as far as the movies go, and so on. Do the girls ever fall out of these dresses? Do they? <laughs> Norma, do you ever lose your top? No, that's not happened to me so far, but it might happen today at this rate. <laughs> Yes. Thanks, Thank you, I tell you, it's not just about food to funerals. It's a book called Spoon Bread and Strawberry Wine. It's being published by Liverite, and it's a cookbook for my family. And my grandfather was a slave. He was born in 1854, so he was nine years old when uh, the Emancipation Proclamation came along. And we have a lot of old-fashioned, good Southern black recipes. Hey. Yeah. Listen, how do you feel about, you know, being black and being a model, has there been ever any trouble or any sort of, you know, you ever felt any bad vibrations about it at all? Well, uh, not bad vibrations, but for a while it was very hard to work on 7th Avenue or in any of the magazines, but I think the whole black awareness brought about a change in that and it's getting better and we hope that it'll get a lot better in a lot more areas so that people will get hired on ability, period. Well, that's the way it should be, you know, and I, I guess, you know, living in New York and knowing the people I know, I always thought that's the way it was. <laughs> uh, well, my dear, reality hits, and New York caters to Midwesterners a lot, especially in catalog areas and things like that. Of course, do you do a lot of editorial work? And or yes, more catalog work? All or? of the uh, major magazines. And of course now I'm branching out as a writer and an actress. It's fantastic. I'm, yes, I'm really I happy for you. I hope you'll buy my cookbook. Uh, definitely. If you'll sign yeah. it, I'll buy it. Oh, wonderful. Uh, maybe It'll someday. out in uh, November. Do I ever get to taste one of those recipes? But of course. And I hope you have lots of good cooking. And we have old pictures of, you know, people in the family from daguerreotypes, actually, from 1898. And little uh, portraits of what it was like being black in the South in the early part, late, later part of the 19th century. What do your parents think about you leaving the South and coming to the big city and throwing your looks around? Tell me, what do you oh, think about that? My looks around. Well, I guess my father loves it. Yes, as long as we keep stepping. <laughs> okay, so I guess Norma Jean's stepping right away for us now, huh? What are you doing, Billy? Shoe doesn't fit? <laughs> yes, it fits. I'm putting things back together. <laughs> I'm putting things back together. Oh, wow. Have you tasted any of Norma Jean's cooking? No, I haven't. But she promised to invite me over for dinner one day. Norma Jean! Yeah, when are you going to invite me over for dinner? Oh, I want to go <laughs> over so for dinner, She's so busy over huh? there dancing. That's why she can't ever... Huh? <laughs> She's... <laughs> All we're thinking about is that food. I don't know. But do you guys... You don't look like you eat? Oh, well, I do. I admit to being uh, having a hearty appetite <laughs> at all times. Ooh, that sounds good. What about you? Do you have to diet to keep that? Well, I don't eat as much as I'd like. Because <laughs> that means I'd be eating every hour on the hour. I just nibble all the time. <laughs> okay, well, let's move back and let you uh, be free. Hey, Scott, you're... What's this one? Huh? Listen, these seasonless clothes, is this summer, winter, fall, spring? And For the most part, I think that they're seasonless clothes. Uh, there are many of them that are, that are definitely summer things and that one wouldn't wear in the dead of winter. <laughs> you know, I think, though, so, uh, since a large portion of the collection is uh, in Jersey, and it's for evening. It can be worn. I was really time, fascinated too. The way I saw those dresses rolled up to like this, it makes for great packing. And yes, they do. Up. They do pack well, and they do wrinkle. 
but they have to they have to be hung for uh, half an hour, or so or an hour even, and the wrinkles fall out. But these clothes are made for traveling, huh? Yes, I, I think that uh, they pack easy enough for traveling. I mean, these uh, no, how do you, what kind of care are these clothes taking? Is this a dry clean or wash? It has to be dry clean. One shouldn't wash them. What do these cost? These are in the, uh, around the 225 range. What do you think about fashion at a price like that? I mean, that's not an outrageous price to play, considering all the the, the well, cost. Uh, how do, how what kind of markup is there in, in clothes like this? I mean, you, it's tell me about it. Percent, like like all other uh, industries. I think mark, most of the thing, especially in our industry, everything is doubled. That seems fair. If it's $50, it's, it's $100 at retail. If it's $100 at, at uh, wholesale, it's, um, it's $200 at uh, retail. What kind of girls are buying this? The secretaries and career girls and executive girls? I and found that there are, that is just no telling. There's <laughs> no telling, right? Who's going to buy them? Mothers, the grandmothers, daughters. Exactly, because I find that a lot of the collection is adaptable to any age group. Most of the collection is adaptable to any age group. Of course, the ones that they're wearing just now are definitely young dresses. I mean, I just don't see them uh, being worn by grandmothers unless she's a very unusual grandmother. Like Dietrich? Like Dietrich. Are there any film stars that you'd like to dress or some movies you'd like to do the clothes for? Are you thinking of doing things like that? Yes, I will be working on a film in August, hopefully. With Roberta Flack, the movie is, is uh, Bessie. It's about the life of Bessie Smith. Right, hey, that should, Roberta's great. And when I was uh, in college, I used to go uh, almost every night to hear at Mr. Henry's have a hamburger. She's this thing upstairs. She's really taken off too, right, in Washington, mm -hmm. Capitol Hill. I think she's super lady. Boy, these girls do carry on, huh? Huh? Once when they get started, there's no stopping them. <laughs> What do the buyers think of all this they, when they come in and see all this well, carrying on? Things down for, for press shows and that kind of thing. Yeah. She's having a love affair with that mirror and that camera, huh? God, she's, she's incredible. <laughs> How do you like seeing your clothes up? <laughs> Being used in this way, it's huh? It's good to see them in action. It just shows you what what can be done with them. I think it, you know, the truth of the matter is that we have to admit that you know a lot of Billy's sex appeal is coming from the dress, coming from the makeup, coming from. There are a lot of things going together to put this girl, you know, together like this. Are there any other dreams, any new areas of conquest you're thinking of going into? Some little well, yes, secret. I want to do things other than just New York. I mean, I, I want to do things that uh, have an international appeal rather than just uh, just here in America. Are the clothes available in Europe now, or Japan? Yes, and they are available in Japan and in Europe. What's that Japanese market like? Do they, you find them? If it's good for New York, it's good for the world. For the most part, yes. Perhaps uh, Japan is, has a different kind of uh, market than uh, we have here, but certain things uh, have a definite appeal in Japan. Do you uh, approve of this uh, flower on the shoe? It's nice. Anywhere. What do you think? Anywhere. It works. Are you getting a lot of your fabrics and things from uh, Japan? From, not from Japan. From, from Europe and uh, America. I believe in American fabrics most of all, though. I think that we can do it here as well as they can do it in Europe. Maybe not quite as well, but we can, it can be done. If one searches out the resource to do it, it can be done. It wasn't long ago I read an article in New York Magazine that was pretty wild, all about people shrinking markers, and that's why dresses don't fit. And What do you have to say about that? Do you shrink markers? Well, all of our, I haven't had that problem yet because all of mine is done here in terms of cutting and baking of the markers. It's all done on these premises. So if we give a marker out to be done, we give exactly, we know exactly how much fabric it takes. So we give them exactly the amount that's needed. Well, of course, we, we, give, we allow for, for damages in the fabric and so on. But uh, for the most part, it's uh, it's pretty much under control. We're not we're not that to that size yet that we have to uh, uh, give the whole thing to someone else and depend on their on their concentration because they can rob you if if you give it to someone to a contractor who will make it for you. Entirely.
What about this jewelry? Is this your jewelry too, Scott? Yes, it is. This is a wild fabric, sort of an Art Deco thing. And do you design the fabric yourself? The yes, I do. All the prints? I, I, I'm in absolutely every area. That's why it's so difficult to put together a collection because it's, it's. Uh, I get involved with absolutely everything, not just, not just the making of the garments, but also designing the fabrics and, and making sure that uh, the colors are right and uh, the accessories and uh, the color of the makeups that I want them to wear with uh, certain things and uh, the shoes. What do you think of the fashion magazines? You know, Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Town and Country. You think they're giving good fashion reportage to the suburbs? Not as much as, as they could. You know, I think there's a lot of involvement with with uh, metropolitan areas such as New York, Los Angeles, uh, uh, Chicago, perhaps, and but not enough. There isn't enough available. I don't think. Well, it's impossible for the magazines to, to really do the whole thing, you know. A lot of it comes from the person, you know. They have to have a certain sense of style to begin with. What do you think about Women's Wear Daily and their sort of fashion power? I like Women's Wear Daily. Are you afraid of Women's Wear Daily? I'm not afraid of Women's Wear Daily. They've done nothing but good for me. I mean, uh, the first interest in Scott Barry was Women's Wear Daily. And uh, they've always reported accurately uh, about my collections. And, uh, and, uh, That's great. <laughs> there goes Ebony, huh? <laughs> you were, I'm, <laughs> the Gatsby's having a lot of effect, I think, on the dance styles. A lot of people are going back to doing the Charleston. Who do you like to go out dancing when you go out to New York? Oh, I like Les Jardins, and I like, uh, oh, any place that there's dancing, I don't mind, I'll go. Do you go out every night? No, impossible. <laughs> <laughs> and you get out in the morning? I usually get out around between 9 and 10, but I usually work until 7, 8. It's a long day, huh? Do you find that most of your time is taken up by your work? You think you, when you leave, the, when you leave, you're still thinking about fashion. It never well, stops. Certain periods of the year, you know, whenever a collection is due, you, know, you have to give yourself enough time to concentrate and to, and to think and to put the whole thing together. We're gonna have to get out and see her in this play, huh? <laughs> How long have you been on 7th Avenue now, Scott? You're, you're inside on the desk. What's she looking for? I've been on 7th Avenue. This is my second year. And where were you before that? On uh, 38th Street. Working out of the, your own studio? Mm -hmm. So this is really the beginning of the big time for you? Kind of, yes. Oh, hmm. I know that you, know, you came from Philadelphia to New York about how long ago? I've been in New York about uh, seven years now. It gets you prepared through the day. You're a yogi? Yes, you have to do a little breathing exercise, you know, a little exercise to keep yourself tuned up, you know. I love my asanas. Are you kidding? Will you stand on your head for us? Oh, no, that's one trick I haven't mastered. What about the lotus position? Oh, yes, that I can. Okay. What about you, Scott? Do you know any yoga? No. I've been tempted. In fact, I was supposed to go with a friend uh, today for uh, a class to see if, how I would like it and see if it would work. Uh... Oh, it's really nice. It really is nice. I just you know, I just came back from India. I was there a couple months in an ashram, and it's really beautiful and it's really nice. Mm. That's exactly what I feel I need. <laughs> I think I just might go from here to my yoga class. <laughs> Find a lot of pressure, a lot of tenseness. Yes. Yes, it is. is it really fashion that vicious backbiting, snapping? Not if you keep out of it. If you keep out of, if you keep out of the eye of it. I try and stay and stay into my own little my own little world, kind of, you know. Of course you have to be in there at the same time. Yeah, but there's a way of getting in and out. Right? In the there's Scott waving one of his scars around, huh? Billy, Norma Jean, everyone working really hard to bring fashion right in your living room. When was the last time you uh, saw a great designer like Scott Berry? 
giving you all this fashion secrets, huh? And these girls working really hard, giving you high fashion right at home. Don't just sit around. Go out there and buy these things. You can look like this. You can move like this, too. Look at these girls for inspiration. Timeless, you know? Something that, that they, they love and want to keep and not to toss out at the end of each season. I don't believe in disposable dresses. I mean, there are certain manufacturers that, that make dresses that uh, they can only be washed a certain number of times, and after a certain washing, they shrink. If it, you know, and then they have to be handed down or thrown out entirely. These clothes look like they'd never go out of fashion, and uh, from what you can tell me about the way you keep an eye on the way they're made, it looks like they're going to last a long, long time. Well, first of all, most of them are not the kind of dresses that one wears every day. But something that's very special in the wardrobe that you can always go a year from today or two years from today and say, oh, I love that dress and I feel absolutely right in it and I want to, I want to wear it again. You can wear it endlessly. I think it's great the way that even though Norma Jean is wearing a lot of fabric, she's, you know, she's, she's so sexy and it, her body still comes through, in the, but it looks like there's a lot of yardage there. There is a lot of yardage, but it's the kind of fabric that you can use a lot of uh, yardage and still have it uh, lay close to the body. I like to sell flowers on this, around the neck. It doesn't need any kind of accessories at all. It's just... It does everything that it should do. Do you make your clothes so they can be mixed up, different jackets with different pants, and do you coordinate each collection each year to fit in with the woman's wardrobe? Mm, not particularly, because I don't think that that's not my particular customer. I deal with a lot of one-piece dresses. I've never seen her on the floor before, but I must say she does it beautifully, doesn't she? Have you ever seen your clothes on the floor before? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> you know, whenever I'm working with talent and imagination, I, you know, I hate to say goodbye. I hate to end it. But um, I think we're all talked out and filmed out, and uh, we've seen a lot of clothes and heard a lot of great things. Is there any last message, any last thing you want to tell in New York? Well, nothing in particular. I don't think so. But it's just I enjoy doing this kind of thing, and I hope that it has been kind of informative, you know, about what Scott Berry is about. I think so. You know, I'm just trying. I'm hoping that there's no question that I could have asked, that I should have asked, that I didn't ask. And is there anything? There's nothing you can think that any last little thing. Sometimes I. Uh, I missed something, but I think we pretty much covered it. I think we covered pretty much everything. I think, you know, I think it can be said that Anton Parrish was the first person to show clothes on the floor. <laughs> clothes on the floor, right? But I bet a lot of girls get on the floor in those clothes. <laughs> oh, sure, they're good for that, huh? too. They can. Norma Jean! <laughs> okay, so Norma's going out for a matinee, and Billy Blair we saw recently in People magazine where they really called her the model of the year is uh, on the floor for the first time on film. This is really a first. She looks beautiful in red. I hope that you know you're all appreciating this color and I'm getting it. <laughs> She doesn't need yoga class, man. She's about as limber and as anybody can get. Billy, one's out. You have one out. Why did you tell me? The, she's even okay so okay bye bye Billy bye bye Scott thank you very much bye bye did you have fun oh loads of fun this is better than dancing at beep <laughs> listen will you come do a soap opera with us sometime sure mm -hmm. Scott did one he was a gangster and he was fantastic <laughs> Huh? Remember that? Yes, I love oh, it. A long time ago. I still hear about it. People still say, I saw you on television. Sure. <laughs> and I, I call up all of my friends and say, look who's on television. <laughs> You're going to be on television again. <laughs> Heartless, okay. wasn't I? Heartless? Completely cold. Ooh, I don't know. So, give her a kiss goodbye now. Kiss her thank you. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay. Me too? Huh?
That's it? Okay. Bye-bye. This is our Corey Hay reporting. The Anton Parrott Show, bringing you fashion live and in your home. So I hope you've all appreciated it and these dynamite colors that Anton is giving you, you know. All this light and brightness is really something new and completely unique on television. 